Good morning and welcome to the Los Angeles City Council. Uh, this is a regularly scheduled meeting of the Los Angeles City Council and today is Tuesday, February 7th, 2006. Um, we are meeting here in John Ferraro Council Chambers um, in room 370 of City Hall. These meetings are open to the public and we invite all members of the public to come to our meetings here in the uh, City Council Chambers and within our committee uh, meetings which are also scheduled. All of this can be found on our city's website, www.lacity.org, where we are also our webcast for those who are not close to a TV or um, do not have a cable system to receive Channel 35. Uh, we are also uh, simulcast on LA uh, City's council phone, which allows people to call in and to listen to the proceedings of the Los Angeles City Council, as well as our council committees. Um, we are uh, at, uh, right now, uh, eight members. I want to thank Council Members Cardenas, Gruel, Hahn, Parks, Rosendahl, Smith, Zine for their timely attendance. Um, we have Mr. LaBange on jury duty, so he is excused today, and Mr. Reyes is um, coming, uh, 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 he's excused to come a little bit late. So I'd like to ask Council Members Wizar, Padilla, uh, Perry, Weiss, and Wesson to come down, and as soon as we have two more members, we will have a quorum, and we will begin the business uh, of the council today. Thank you, Ms. Perry. I'm waiting one more member to begin the meeting. Council members Cardenas, Gruel, Hahn, Parks, Perry, Rosendahl, Smith, and Zine uh, for being here. And ask Council members Wizar, Padilla, Weiss, and Weston to join us so we can begin our meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wizar. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Cardenas, Gruel, Hahn, Wizar, Labange, Padilla, Parks, Perry, Reyes, Rosendahl, Smith, Weiss, Wesson, Zion, Garcetti, 10 members present, and a quorum, Mr. President. All right. I'd uh, like to uh, invite uh, Council Member Wizar. If you'd like to do the salute to the flag today, if you'd uh, lead us, if I can please ask everybody in Council Chambers, as is customary in our first meeting of the week, to salute the flag, and uh, Mr. Wizar will, will lead us. Please stand. Put your hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation. Thank you very much, Mr. Wiesar. Madam Clerk, first order business. Approval of the minutes. Uh, Mr. Cardenas moves, Ms. Hahn seconds, no objection, that's a unanimous vote. Commendatory resolutions for approval. Uh, Mr. Parks moves, Mr. Smith seconds, if there's no objection, unanimous vote, so ordered. Next uh, order. Mr. President, this is time for comments from the public on items not on Council's agenda. Okay. Now it's time for a general public comment for items that are uh, within our jurisdiction but not on the agenda. Um, I'd like to invite Spike Marlin to come forward be followed by Valinda Jo Wright and Thomas uh, Kate Kitely, excuse me. Uh, you'll have two minutes each to speak. Is Spike Marlin here? Mr. Marlin? Going once? He stepped outside. Okay, we'll put him at the end. Uh, Valinda Jo Wright is our next speaker then. Good morning. I'm certainly glad to be with Good morning. you guys this morning. Um, just over a month ago, I went in person to MTA Customer Relations and made a detailed complaint that several, uh, about several inordinately lengthy service delays near 4100 Olympic. Since that time, I've received no written response as a supervisor promised. My mother, Victoria, was born on 11722, so I'm quite pleased to be with you here today, uh, given her hastily scheduled medical procedure last week for yesterday. 
My brother and I have been have made some 25 calls in the last three weeks trying to arrange doctor's appointments to no avail, being told that Dr. Lee, her physician, is on enforced paid time off and that Dr. Kumar, a pulmonary disease specialist, can't discuss patient information, was of little comfort after my mother, Wednesday before last, on January 25th, sat in his office waiting room for over three hours. The Ku Klux Klan was founded in Pulaski, Tennessee, less than 100 miles away, is Whitwell, Tennessee. In 1998, the Whitwell Middle School eighth graders began a journey of enlightenment by beginning a Holocaust, a Holocaust project that culminated in a resting place for some 11 million paper clips. I would like to today express my belief that the schools being built at the site of the O Ambassador should be named for Robert F. Kennedy, named Robert F. Kennedy High School. For some two weeks, I've been going to the Rampart Post Office at 4040 West Washington, trying to find out where mail forwarded to my new address is to no avail. And waiting for the Jumbo 757 for up to 40 minutes has made me christen it the Rolls Royce Black Phantom. I borrowed that. Thank you very much. Our next uh, speaker is Thomas Kiteley. Uh, sorry, Carl Kyle My apologies. Thank you, Mr. Garcetti. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Thomas Kielty. Um, my wife and I lived at Lincoln Place Apartments in Venice for 12 and a half years. We have been locked out of our apartments. What my wife, Claire Sassoon, and I would like is a fair process and a fair result. In November of 2002, we got exactly what we wanted. We got a fair process and a fair result when this council approved a redevelopment plan for a Mr. Bisno and a rapacious out-of-state developer that goes by the name of AIMCO a 42% owner at the time of this redevelopment plan. The conditions that were imposed on this redevelopment plan and agreed to by the developer provided there would be no involuntary tenant displacements. That was November of 2002, this council. Ladies and gentlemen, fast forward three years, early December of last year, a couple of months ago, on December 6, the sheriffs show up at my door and they tell me and they tell my wife and they tell my 15-year-old daughter who never remembers living anyplace else that we had 15 minutes to leave our home. We were upset. It was an involuntary displacement. There's language. I'm sure you've all seen it. It's in your notes from the Plum Committee hearing that says there shall be no involuntary tenant displacements. We are angry, ladies and gentlemen. Picture yourself being locked out of your home. We are angry. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Appreciate your testimony. Uh, is Spike Marlin back, Mr. Marlin? To be followed by Barbara Eisenberg. Good morning. Spike Marlin, tenant of Lincoln Place. Um, I've come here again to hammer on the necessity of getting outside counsel to the advice that Rocky Delgadillo gives you uh, for this. Apparently, it's been really bad. Apparently, uh, as of Thursday, now it's cost the city $180,000 in attorney's fees, which uh, would be nice seed money to buy a couple of these buildings from AMCO. But now that money goes for other things, and it's going to go even deeper. The money's going to get deeper and wider into attorney's fees. You have to record the conditions of the track map. It's a big loophole in the system, but you can repair it for every instance by recording the track map. The only people who get harmed by recording the track map are those who would play the city. It's a very complicated issue, and I'm not sure I'm the guy to really explain it. I barely grasp it, and as I grasp it, I can barely explain it. But uh, we have people who can, uh, Noel Weiss, Tom Kielty, uh Bill Chappelle, 
These are people you're all familiar with that have been here that will be glad to uh, discuss this with you. I think particularly Bill uh, may come down and talk with you. But it's really important that you do this. We're being evicted illegally, and, uh, and that ain't right. And this body has the power to stop it. You have, you have the power. And if you don't exercise the power, then why are you governing, you know? That's the question. Anyway, uh, respectfully, I thank you very much. Please do the right thing. Record the conditions of the track map so at least we can start on that and get outside counsel to Rocky because he's getting awfully expensive for his bad advice. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate your testimony, Barbara Eisenberg. Our next speaker after that will be Rose Murphy. Good morning. Um, please use your influence to put a moratorium on the current evictions at Lincoln Place at Apartments in Venice and use the empty apartments for occupancy now, not to hold them empty for many years. The conditions of the vesting track map must be recorded as well. We longtime residents have nowhere to go but join the ever increasing homeless population. Thank you very much. Rose Murphy will be our next speaker and then Gloria Morales. Good morning, my name is Rose Murphy. Please advise the full city council to have the city planning department that they must follow the conditions of the vesting tenant track map uh, AIMCO, that AIMCO was to abide by. This is a travesty of justice against all Lincoln Place tenants and has to be rectified immediately or the stench of this will reverberate for many years. Thank you very much. Thank you, we appreciate your uh, testimony today. Gloria Morales. Good morning. I'm Gloria Morales. Uh, I've been living in Lincoln Place apartment for 32 years, and I hope I stay there for, for the longest I live. But uh, we need to, for, for, uh, for you to help us to to, put a, to tell the city council needs to tell to city planning department to file the, combin, the, the connection or the rest, the vesting truck map, please. If you know, we, not, we have to go out. We don't have place to go until now. I've been trying to look uh, apartments in the cities, you know, the seniors, but everything, you know, takes years. And so we were, we were planning to stay there because that's what they told us. Please, can you help us? Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Morales. And I'd like to, um, that closes our public comment, but I'd like to recognize Mr. Rosendahl at this time. Uh, good morning, and thank you, Mr. President, for recognizing me. Good morning, colleagues. Um, as you can see, the Lincoln Place tenants are coming here, and they've been coming r rather regularly lately uh, on their own uh, energy uh, to point out that March 20th, uh, is the day that AMCO has uh, drawn the line in the sand uh, saying to people who've been living there for a long time um, that it's time to go even if they bang on the door and have the sheriffs. I just think this is outrageous. I think it's over the top and there needs to be a way in which our city attorney's office can revisit some of the notions of the Ellis Act and look at the track map and conditions and see why it hasn't been recorded and why the tenants are given no rights whatsoever in this situation. It's true that AMCO is offering packages to move these folks to different locations, but the location they're living in is the ideal location, and it would make a lot more sense to keep the tenants there at this point. If there is a way in which our laws can enforce tenants' rights, that's where I want to go. Over the next 40 days, we're looking at various aspects, and maybe there is an opportunity for us to have outside counsel. Maybe there's an opportunity for us to visit uh, the Ellis Act. Further discussion will take place. And I just want to thank the tenants for coming here today. And if there's a way in which we can do something, we will do it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Mr. Rosendahl. Uh, next order of business. Uh, next item, Mr. President, is item number one. It's an item notice for public hearing. It's a street lighting uh, district ordinance in Council District 14. Okay. Uh, that's been noticed for public hearing. There's no cards. Anybody wishing to be heard on that? If not, that will open and close the public c comment on that. Anybody wishing to call it special? Um, if not, please open the roll. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. That is approved. 
Um, next items, please. Item number two is also a public hearing item, and the applicant consents to a continuance to March 7th. Okay. Is there any objection to that continuance, colleagues? If not, there'll be a unanimous vote so ordered. That'll be continued to March 7th. Next items, please. Next items are items for which public hearings have been held, items three through eight. Okay. Uh, any specials, colleagues? We've had uh, public comment on those already, so require a motion to reopen them. Seeing no specials, three to eight. Please prepare the roll on the balance of the item and tabulate the vote. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, <laughs> Mr. Parks. My apologies. Which one would you? I, I realize I haven't been here for a while, but uh, <laughs> sorry. three. You look familiar, but I, don't, I wasn't quite sure from where. Number three, we'll call special. Any others, colleagues? On the uh, balance, please prepare the roll and tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. Those are approved. Next items. Next items are items for which public hearings have not been held. Items 9 through 28, 10 votes are required for consideration. And on item number 9, that is the commissioner, do you wish to hold that on the desk? Yes, let's hold that on the desk. And uh, for the rest, I have no public comment card, so we will open and close public comment. There is a card, I believe, on item number 25. Oh, on 25, excuse me. There is one card on 25, my apologies. Let's call that special. Any other specials on these items, colleagues? Seeing none, please prepare the roll and tabulate the vote on the balance. 13 ayes. Those are approved. Uh, next items. Next item on the supplemental agenda is an item for which public hearing has been held, item number 29. Okay. Anybody wishing to call it special, Ms. Perry? Um, thank you, Mr. President. I just wanted to make a few comments about this very innovative program that will attract international investment to Los Angeles and help create new jobs. Um, by designating our city as a regional center, we're taking a step to promote uh, economic development even more by leveraging existing federal programs. This city, our city, will begin this program on a pilot basis targeting our enterprise zones that already are in existence and will be available to new commercial enterprises that create at least 10 full-time employment positions. And I hope that I get a unanimous vote today. Great. Thank you. Uh, why don't we open the roll on that item, um, close the roll and tabulate the vote? 13 ayes. Okay, that is approved. Um, specials, colleagues, on the, the, the rest of the, was it just that one that we're taking up? Uh, uh, yes. Okay, so the next items, please, the 30 next through 32. Items, uh, 30 through 32 are items for which public hearings have not been held, 10 votes for consideration. Ms. Hahn? I'd like to call item 30 special. 30, okay. Mr. Parks? Ms. Hahn already did it, but I'd like to ask reconsideration for 16. 16, uh, okay. We have an amending motion. We'll put that on the reconsideration after we run through the agenda. Uh, 31 or 32, anybody wishing to call special? If not, please prepare the roll and tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. Okay, that is approved. Um, next items. Uh, Mr. President, do you wish to reconsider 16? Yes, at let's this time? Uh, open the roll on reconsideration, colleagues. Uh, please prepare the roll and tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. That is reconsidered, and let's call that special. Mr. Parks, is it just a technical amendment? Is just, it's, it's amending. And you we'll want to wait till it gets circulated? circulated okay. All right. We'll, we'll hold that on the desk then. Okay. Uh, let us return then to the items um, that we have special. Um, why don't we begin with our commissioner, item number nine. And that's confirmation of Ms. Ann Jackson to the Quality and Productivity Commission. Ms. Jackson, I'd like to invite you forward based on the recommendation of Mr. Zine. I was uh, happy to make this nomination. Please, if you'd like to sit before us and want to thank you for putting yourself forward for service. And Mr. Zine, if you'd like to uh, say any words on this. I'd be delighted to, Mr. President. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Your uh, involvement in the community. Uh, you've served on this commission. Yes. And you found that it's productive. Productive and valuable, both. Have you found challenges with the there commission? There are challenges in getting recognition to city employees who come up with innovations and, and new initiatives. So we, we would like to continue working on that. And that would be a creative way to save taxpayers money, Absolutely. get the job done more efficient. Yes. And I understand there's an annual uh, luncheon or an yes. annual dinner that the uh, a commission luncheon, sponsors. A luncheon, an that, awards luncheon. That the mm -hmm. commission sponsors. Yes. And then in addition to that, do you serve on any other activities with the city or county of Los Angeles uh, to help the people of this region? I was formerly a commissioner on the L.A. Convention and Exhibition Center Authority for seven years, and I currently serve on the L.A. County uh, Judicial Procedures Commission. And is there another uh, group you work with, a charitable I'm on the board of directors of the Pet Orphans of Southern California. And there's one more. Maryvale Orphanage and the Junior League of Los Angeles. Okay. I want to make sure they were all mentioned uh, 
so I highly recommend you for this. I know you're a resident of the fine third district, along with your wonderful husband, Sean. Thank you. And I know you'll do well on that commission. So Thank recommend you unanimous approval. And your commute down here this morning, was it pleasant or was it the gridlock as we it normally encounter? It was a bit messy, but I made it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. It's always thank the, you for volunteering. The orange line, the red line for next time. Right? <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Uh, any other colleagues wishing to be heard? If not, Madam Clerk, if you please prepare the roll and tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. Congratulations, Commissioner. Thank you. Welcome aboard. Very thank pleased you. to have you. Thank you. Forthwith on that, please. Okay. Next uh, item, please. Next item, Mr. President. Item number three, call special by Council Member Parks. Okay. Item number three is now before us, colleagues. And this has been called special by Council Member from the 8th District, Mr. Parks. I'd like to recognize him at this time. Thank you, Mr. President. I would just ask, this is an item that has three uh, issues on it, two dealing with altering the badge and the other deals with renaming the program uh, as far as level one, two, and three. In committee, I was just opposed to the name to changing the badge design for reserves. So I just ask that we separate item one and two and then item three so we can vote individually. Okay. Is there any objection to separating the question? I'm sorry, so Ms. Madam Clerk? Uh, Mr. President, there's just one recommendation on that, and the ordinance, um, I believe there's just one ordinance on that. There's also a public safety report that's yeah. a part of that. Are you referring to the report, Mr. Yeah, Parks? The report deals with two items in the ordinance that alters the badge, and then one item that changes the, the naming of the different levels of reserves. Okay. We may have difficulty separating within the ordinance, splitting the ordinance, but we can, I think, do the just, report. We just, I, why don't we just accept Mr. Parks' suggestion as a motion for how we should proceed and, uh, and just take it that way. Okay. I just want to check. Can, can we, uh, Mr. City Attorney, can we vote separately on parts of the ordinance? Can we separate that? I, I believe they'd have to be uh, treated as uh, two different uh, or, ordinance. We'd probably have to split the ordinance. Okay, and we can't split the ordinance just as a matter of, of business. This is uncharted territory for me, so. We, we rely on our, our well, previous well, president's council here, Mr. Padilla. Right, right, okay. Council could vote to uh, amend the ordinance, and then we'd have to come in with a clean copy of, of the ordinance that council votes on. Okay. Um, it was suggested to me. Yes, Mr. Parks, did you want to clarify? I, I didn't want to go through all the many ord ordinances. is fine. I just don't want to vote or approve for me right. the listing of the changing of the bads. That's all why I don't we just it, Why don't we separate that within the report then? I don't want to alter the ordinance. I don't want to come back with a, right. another ordinance. This ordinance is fine. I just want to vote Ms. that I'm opposed Ms. to the reach Mr. Smith, the changing did you want of the bads. Say something on that? What he needs to do probably is move to strike that sentence. Then he can vote on that issue. And the council will decide whether he has a valid argument or not, and then vote as amended or not amended. Right. So you, that, that can be on the record. Just okay. As long as we don't have to move it beyond today. All right. So do you want to move that, Mr. Parks? Yes. Okay. We'll do that. Uh, anybody second? I'll second for the, the purpose of, of voting on that. Uh, Mr. Zahn. Yeah, I, are we going to be debating this with the police department representatives that are here? O only if somebody no. would like to. You're the last speaker on the queue right now. So the only issue is uh, you're not going to support one portion of that, Mr. Parks? Two portions. Two portions of it? Changing of the badge, the two items of change. Where the reserve comes off? Yes. And then what's the other issue? It's changing the R on the, on the, on the regular badge and changing reserve on the retirement badge. We've got two reservists okay. versus, you know, <laughs> well, former I, I'm chief just, here. I'm just curious as to the issues, why that's coming about, why the police department, through public safety, made the recommendation to make that modification and I understand okay. Mr. Park's concern with that, but if we can have uh, Mr. Smith information is, uh, as to we why we're it. making those changes on the badge. Okay. Mr. Smith, do you want to? Thank you. I, and I was going to address that real quick. If I can have the lieutenant come forward, please, and Mr. Bush, do you want to come forward also? While they're coming forward, just to, so everybody understands the history of this, two years ago, the police department, in an effort to revitalize the reserve program, which would begin to diminish greatly, put together a task force of reserve officers and regular officers to determine what was needed to make the LAPD reserve program blossom once again to where it had been in the past. The recommendations came forth through a working group. There was about 20, as I recall, initiatives that were brought forth through the police department to the police commission through Commissioner Scoban. 
The police commission approved these 20 recommendations, and what you see before you is the ordinance that was needed to make some of the changes, not all of them, because some of them were done by the chief already through his uh, authority as a chief. The remaining portions required ordinance changes, one of which is the R on the badge, which, the, which uh, Mr. Parks is referring to. So, Lieutenant, would you like to add anything to that on my time? And hold my time, please. Right. One of the, uh, the issues of removing the R is to keep it uniform with our regular full-time police officers. Uh, there are a couple issues that, uh, that come about when our uh, field reserves that are line ready, they want to be identical to what our full-time officers are for safety reasons is one thing. And then the other thing is uh, just a, a cohesiveness within the department so that there's no separation of reserves and regulars. Um, is this pretty much done in other departments around the state? Yes, uh, throughout the state, the, our research has indicated that uh, there is no, you, you cannot tell a reserve officer from a full-time uh, paid officer throughout the state. In fact, in a lot of departments, they pay them for their time, don't they? Yeah, that's right. We're, we, not, we're not addressing that today. Yeah, though. right. <laughs> but the, this was in effect really then to bring reserve officers more into the mainstream of LAPD, make them feel part of the whole and to conform with what's going on in other departments around the state. Right. It's, uh, it, it brings us in line, uh, some of the initiatives bring us in line with what uh, is required by post, and this is uh, one of the, uh, what we consider a small, a small thing to do to bring them in line with, uh, with other agencies throughout the state. Thank you. Uh, I'll leave the officers here for any questions anyone else may have, but I just think this is important that the Reserve Officer Corps, which is 600 people that give their time to this city, thought these 20 initiatives were important to them. It would also help us recruit more reserve officers and bring us more in conformance with what everybody else around the state is doing as it relates to reserve officers uh, around the state of California. So I think it's a good proposal. It passed the police commission unanimously. It is endorsed by the chief. It is endorsed by the command staff. And I think it deserves our support today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Zahn? Yeah. Will there be a distinction to, uh, for example, Lieutenant of Police when he sees an officer in uniform any distinction to know that that individual is a reserve officer versus a full-time officer? The only uh, distinction that there may be is our, our badges are uh, sequential, and we're going to start a new sequence of numbers for reserves <clears throat> that will be known within the department, but uh, the, 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 citizen, the uh, public that we serve won't be able to recognize it. So, so a, a supervisor that looks at an officer and wants to determine if that's a full-time officer or not will be able to go by that number on the badge and with that series number, know that that's a reserve officer. Yes. So there will be knowledge to the supervisors and other officers to know this reserve officer. But the general public will look at it as a regular police officer, whether full-time or reserve capacity. That's absolutely correct. Is this the normal procedure in other departments, other that, agencies? Our research has indicated that this is the, the normal protocols that are used by other agencies throughout the state. Because I understand some reserve officers have encountered with uh, individuals who've been through the criminal justice system many times, challenged them, you're a reserve officer, and versus the full-time officer and the attitude that uh, the hardened criminal, shall we say, looks toward the reserve officer versus the full-time officer. We've, we've seen that where they, they will look, you, you say the hardened criminal, so they'll Can you identify looking. yourself, please? Uh, David Bush, reserve officer, and I work uh, downtown, uh, the volunteer service section. But and that is also a concern that, that they will take a look at the badge and they uh, immediately will identify that uh, you are a reserve officer. Okay, I think they just want the microphone closer to you. Yeah, closer to your mouth. They can't really hear you. So the, re, the R, the only distinction is on your badge where the number, preceding the number, it says R. Yes, sir. And the recommendation is that the R would be removed and there'll be a series of numbers that would go out to reserve officers so that all the badges they currently have would be removed and a new series would come out. Right. When this passes, all these old badges will be turned back in. Um, that we will allow the reserves to buy these only if they're in lieu site, and that will be at no expense to the city. Okay. Reserve officers will, will purchase these if okay. they so choose. And with the surveys that have been done, is this one of the issues of concern to people who want to become a reserve, to have a distinction of reserve part-time versus full-time? Yes. And one of the things going, going along with this, the reserve officers have to uh, to get in to be a reserve, the standards are not lowered at all. We're the same as a full-time. So this would put us on par with the full-time officers as far as the badge. So to become reserve, you have to spend hundreds of hours to go through the training 
the post peace officer standard and training courses that are prescribed for the regular officers? Yes, sir. Okay. And our identification cards will remain the same where it does say reserve on there. That will not be taken off. Okay. I don't know if there was a misconception, but the reserve will stay on our ID badge. All they did was uh, understand the ID card. They removed it from above police. There was, there was reserve up above. Now it just says police, but on the bottom of the badge it says reserve. And that will remain, and also it tells you what type of reserve you are. That's on the ID badge, and that will remain. Level one, two, or three. Correct, sir. So there will be the opportunity of a supervisor, in particular, to make a distinction for whatever purposes of a full-time versus a reserve with the ID card and with the badge identification? Yes, sir. Okay. And I know years and years ago, it used to be a diamond-shaped badge when the reserves... Yes, sir. Many years ago, years they, ago. they tried to assimilate it into the, the regulars, um, which was a major hurdle, and, and now it's one step further to help recruit additional people for reserves. Yes, sir. And I'll mention, if anyone's interested in becoming a reserve, I have uh, applicant cards right here. So. Uh, Anyone in the audience uh, who wants to, uh, Mr. Fujioka, if you're interested in serving your city in your off-duty time, uh, to join the Reserve Corps with the LAPD. They won't take me. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Zine. Uh, Mr. Pa Ms. Parks, okay. All right, so um, Mr. Parks passes. We will now um, first consider the motion to strike the sections that Mr. Parks enumerated. If anybody wishing to be heard on that, if not, Let's open the roll on striking that part, colleagues. Let's, so Mr. If, if you point vote, of clarification, yeah, Mr. Smith, yes. If you're voting yes, you're voting with Mr. Parks to not approve the Correct. recommendation of the commission, which is to, to remove the R. You're leaving the R Correct. on the badge. Okay. To vote no is to support the commission. Right, okay. No, no. So please open the roll. Members vote, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. Six eyes, seven no's. Okay, that does not pass. Um, now we have the ord ordinance as it is. Do, would you like to vote on the report as well, Mr. Park, separately? We can uh, take those. Th the only recommendation on the report is to present and adopt the ordinance. So okay. It, the All ordinance right. is before council. It's a separate report. Okay, now if we can open the roll on the ordinance as originally presented, close the roll and tabulate the vote. Twelve eyes, one no. Okay, that will go over to a second reading in uh, two meeting days. Uh, that would be February 14th. February 14th. We'll take that up again on Valentine's Day. All right, the next item, please. Next item, Ms. Prison. Uh, item number 16 was being held for an amending motion. However, I don't believe it has been passed out, is okay. it? Okay, we'll, we'll just we'll continue to hold that. Uh, number 25, if we can take that up next. And that was called special for a card from the public. Okay, Sylvia Hawkins, I uh, would like to invite you forward for two minutes of public comment on item number 25. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I would like to say... Uh, uh, happy holidays concerning Valentine's Day, and especially to my wife, Cindy Ariana, and uh, to everyone here. On item number 25, let's say yes to the West Los Angeles Planning Commission of Park Instruction. We must continue to use open parking in arena areas, police district, school parking, house complex, and building cold parking, seen and not hidden under parking, having parking under 30 feet for three car garage or two car ports on the lower level or on a third level floor or danger zone areas for all owners and contractors during major construction time. Let's continue to build open parking that is being done in a, on Main Street and First Street for all people to be seen as they go to and forth from their car. I am basically afraid of under anything being built as of this time. Anything under 30 feet is a danger zone for our oceans and for a major disaster. I am with, as we park in the Los Angeles district area, uh, Let's continue to park as we see the people go to and forth from their uh, different areas of work. Uh, let's continue to uh, not charge your arm and leg with meter or with private parking. I'm with no private parking or under tunnel parking at this time because of disaster that's going on with so much uh, happening with tunnels, uh, marijuana found, illegal. Uh, people out of jail, 
so much thing that is done under the ground that basically the United States of America government and the public people are not seeing. So let's keep everything in the scene so we can be aware of what is happening under. Thank you very much. My name is Ms. Sylvia Hawkins. Thank you very much, Ms. Hawkins. Uh, that closes public comment for this item. Anybody wishing to be heard on item 25? If not, please prepare the roll, Madam Clerk, and tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. That is approved. Uh, next item, please. Next item is item number 30, and that was called special by Council Member Hahn. Ms. Janice Hahn, item number 30. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, I think what we're doing here today is um, uh, approving a contract for consulting work to apply for um, Urban Area Security Initiative. I'm understanding that uh, this consultant is already doing the work, so this might be a little bit after the fact. Uh, the deadline, I guess, is February 23rd. Oh, we have somebody here. Uh, February 23rd um, to apply that. But is, is, um, is it my understanding that the work has already been done? Can you hold uh, my time? The, the work is ongoing. It started a, f a few weeks ago. And it will be done probably February 23rd is the application deadline. Colleagues, what I think is important about this, and I, I actually am happy about this, it's for the first time um, that these urban area security initiatives will be dispersed based on threat, vulnerability, and consequence. Um, as you know, since 9-11, uh, security grants, whether they've come from this area or the Transportation Security uh, Administration, have really been based on other variables uh, of which I'm not exactly sure. Uh, but I know uh, at one time Martha's Vineyard uh, got more security dollars than the Port of Los Angeles. Um, so it's a very serious issue. So finally, uh, we have been lobbying Congress uh, to award these grants based on vulnerability, threat, and consequence. What I want to make sure that's included in the scope of work by this consultant is port security. Uh, port security, my friends, has still lagged way behind airport security and other security measures um, in large cities like, like Los Angeles. This urban security um, grant apparently lumps Long Beach and Los Angeles together, Correct. which again is not a bad thing for the port. Between um, Long Beach and Los Angeles, 42% of the trade comes into America's port. Uh, if this port were to be shut down uh, for any possible reason, it would do more damage to our national economy and I dare say our global economy than anything else um, that's happening. So I want to make sure that uh, we no longer are uh, receiving only $1.20 per container, unlike even uh, Seattle Tacoma has received $1.80 per container. And again, the consequence of Seattle Tacoma shutting down versus Long Beach Los Angeles is not even comparable. Um, just to let you know, America's port We've asked for $221 million in, in funding, and we have received only $53 million since the grants were being issued. So I'm excited that at least the criteria um, will be based on those three things. And I don't have to tell you or anybody watching, uh, Los Angeles, whether it's our airport or amusement parks uh, or our port, is always on the top 10 hit list. So we are vulnerable. Uh, the threat is high. And again, the consequence of something happening at our port, I think, is really sometimes beyond calculation. So I want to make sure that this grant is including uh, port security um, measures to, to be uh, funded by this grant. Yes, I can assure you that both the Port of Los Angeles and Long Beach are both involved in the planning process. And port security is a significant component of the process. Good. Well, with that assurance, I'm happy to approve this um, Thank contract. Thank you very much, Ms. Hahn. Our next speaker is Mr. Parks. Good morning. Good morning. I just had a couple of questions. Uh, one thing I was concerned with is whether, I think in this grant, we're using 05 grant dollars seeking an 06 grant. Have we looked at that to see if that's legally appropriate or where we yes. are with that? If that fall, and also, if it falls through, what are the other sources we're looking for for uh, revenue? Uh, we have actually contacted the grantor and requested specific permission to use 2005 money for the 2006 process, and they have granted approval. Okay. Uh, and 2005 funding is actually direct drawdown. We do not have to use. Uh, I, did, I didn't hear that. 
2005 grant funding is actually direct drawdown. We don't have to request any re reserve funding. Okay. So it'll be directly drawn from the grantor. So it's appropriate to do it. The other thing I'm, I'm wondering is that we're today merely going forward on a contract for an individual that's going to coordinate the overall, the larger grant that we're seeking. Is that mm -hmm. what we're doing? That's correct. This grant is a regional grant that combines both the Los Angeles and Long Beach area. So it's extremely helpful to have a budget facilitator to bring all the parties to the table and, and help facilitate the process. So when the larger grant and work plan comes forward, it will come back to council? Yes, absolutely. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Parks. Anybody else wishing to be heard on this? If not, Madam Clerk, please prepare the roll and tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. That is approved. Um, I think that leaves us just with item 16. Do we I, have the... Uh, yes, and, and the uh, amending motion has been distributed to okay. the council. Mr. Parks. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, basically, what we're looking at is in at the MTA, uh, there's been a program created called See It Report It, in which they're mandating all their bus drivers when they see a bad bus bench, a soil bus bench, to report it to the city and the locale. What we're asking in this motion is based on the report that came through Public Works, is to ask our Department of Transportation to create a similar program for our communication, uh, our transportation system. Uh, the only thing we'd add verbally to this motion is that it come back to T committee in 60 days. Okay. Thank you for that amendment. Anybody else wishing to be heard on this? If not, we will open the roll as amended. Madam Clerk, here's the copy if you need one. Um, close the roll and tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. That is approved. Okay, we have a uh, special uh, Rule 23. If you'd like to uh, speak to the motions, Mr. Uh, City Attorney, we will now have you speak to the findings. Yes, uh, and Rule 23 for those folks who are visiting for the first time is an emergency motion that has come forward since the posting of our council agenda. Mr. City Attorney. Thank you, Mr. President. On February 3rd, a racing Lincoln Town Car collided with another vehicle, causing it to crash into uh, Clinica Salvador del Mundo and causing injuries to 13 people. The Lincoln Town Car fled the scene. Immediate action is required to offer the reward because the suspect remains a threat to the community. Council must first make findings pursuant to Government Code Section 54954.2 before considering the substantive motion. Anybody, anybody wishing to be heard on the findings? If not, Madam Clerk, please prepare the roll and tabulate the vote on the findings. 13 ayes. That item is now before us. Uh, Mr. Parks. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, yes, we're asking for a $75,000 uh, reward motion on a very tragic incident that occurred on the uh, February the 3rd in which uh, two cars racing down Vermont Avenue uh, struck a third car, which then was propelled inside of a medical clinic uh, in which 13 people were injured. Uh, unfortunately, two uh, elderly women uh, uh, became uh, so uh, damaged that they ended up becoming amputees, lost their, their leg in this accident. It required uh, access to five of our local hospitals just to uh, assist uh, in medical treatment for those that were injured. I want to also uh, thank our LA Fire Department paramedics that basically uh, came on scene and uh, gained control of this uh, incident within about 15 minutes. But we're asking the $75,000 reward in hopes that we can gain information uh, as relates to those who may be responsible. Uh, the only information at this time uh, by the LAPD is a white Lincoln Town car, ten windows, no license plate. But anyone having information about this incident uh, that occurred on February the 3rd uh, in the vicinity of 83rd in Vermont, we ask you to uh, certainly contact the Los Angeles Police Department. Thank you, Mr. Parks, and we're, we're very sorry to hear of that tragedy, but if we can please open the roll on this item, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. Uh, thank you. That's passed. We'll go forthwith on that. Uh, um, that uh, finishes the regular agenda, I believe, Madam Clerk. Uh, yes, Council has motions for posting and referral. Those are posted and referred. And there are excuses on the desk. Council Member Hahn requests to be excused March 7th and 8th for city business. That meets Council policy. Mr. LeBonge is excused. 
Council Member Weezer requests to be excused Tuesday, February 14th to leave at 11.15 for city business. A motion is required. Okay. Mr. Rosendahl moves. Ms. Perry seconds. Uh, unanimous vote. If there's no objection, so ordered. And Council Member Padilla requests to be excused Friday, March 17th for personal business. That meets Council policy. He is excused. And that clears the desk. Uh, Mr. Weiss? Just ask that item 30 be sent forthwith to the mayor. Okay. We'll send that forthwith as well. And uh, I know we have some special guests here in the audience. Uh, Anybody know where, where are you guys from? All right, well, well welcome. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Weiss? Yeah. Um, I'm, this just in, kids, if I can ask you guys to stand up because you're gonna be on TV tonight, okay? So come on, stand up, everybody. Um, we got kids uh, from St. Paul the Apostle School in Westwood. This is a sixth grade field trip. Um, uh, Ms. Alessi and Ms. Monroe are the teachers, and you guys are here to study government, learn about how LA city government works. So yeah, wave to yourselves. You're going to be on Channel 35 tonight. Welcome St. Paul the Apostle. It's a pleasure to have you all here. We welcome you back anytime for our council meetings. Thank you for, for coming uh, to our meeting today. Colleagues, any announcements? Any announcements? Seeing none, if I could please ask everybody please to stand in council chambers, including our guests, for adjourning motions when we give tributes to folks who have passed on. Okay, adjourning motions, colleagues. Mr. Smith. Uh, thank you, Mr. President, members of the council. As we adjourn in the name of Natalie Pamela Bloom, who is the sister of Mitchell England, or my chief of staff. Natalie passed away at the age of 40 in Scottsdale, Arizona, January 30th. Natalie was known as the Tulip Fairy by herself and a lot of her friends and noodles. Found strength in her family and her grateful dead family. She was a deadhead. She used to travel to the concerts and um, had an extended family of what is known in the trades as the deadheads. Natalie graduated from San Francisco State University and loved working with children and loved to dance and sing. She was preceded in her death by her mother Linda and her uncle Michael, whom she loved very much. Natalie is survived by her two brothers Andy and Mitch Englander, along with their wives Babs and Jane, and the children Austin, Alexandra, uh, Samantha, Michael, Lindsay, and Lauren. Uh, I attended her funeral with Mr. Zine the other day. Uh, she obviously was a, a very a peaceful person. She had a, a disability which she carried on in her later life due to a, a near-death experience at a young age and uh, had to walk with a walker, but um, she enjoyed being with her friends and traveling around the country and had a large group of friends around the country and unfortunately passed away at the very young age of 40 years old. Uh, anyone wishing to uh, give donations in lieu of flowers can donate to an organization called WeMove.org, www.wemove.org. It's an organization that uh, supports funding and, f and research into movement disorders such as Parkinson's disease and others. Um, I know that Mitchell uh, and the family would very much appreciate your uh, condolences and uh, at this time at 40 years old. Yeah, I know, I know all members uh, want to be attached to that and all of us have been thinking of Mitchell and his family. And thank you very much, Mr. Smith. Other adjourning motions, colleagues? Um, I'd ask that we adjourn today also uh, in memory of Betty Friedan who um, shared my birthday February 4th and died on her 85th birthday um, uh, this past Saturday. Uh, born as Betty Naomi Goldstein, um, well known um, for her pioneering work as a feminist, somebody who said that women's role wasn't just to stay home and raise kids, but that they should have options, including to do that, but that they should have options um, to professionally pursue careers. Um, wrote the feminine uh, mystique um, after uh, her education at Smith College, where she graduated summa cum laude, and uh, studied psychology at the University of California at Berkeley. Um, the Feminine Mystique sold over three million copies, and in 1966, Friedan helped uh, found the National Organization for Women and became its first president. Um, she obviously is somebody who uh, almost uh, was, in the civil rights struggle, the most groundbreaking person of this past century, and uh, her passing on her 85th birthday um, is something that leaves us all um, a less rich country. Um, Ms. Perry? on that, Mr. President. Absolutely, all members on that as well. I also had one adjourning motion. I, yes, Ms. Perry. Um, I, I got an email just a few minutes ago um, from uh, Maureen Kindle, who 
wanted to tell me that her friend Willie, our, our friend, friend of many of us, Willie Campbell had passed away in her sleep. Uh, and I, I don't have all the details yet and I'm going to make a more formal um, motion, I guess, tomorrow. But she, just suffice it to say, Willie was an extraordinary woman. I, I don't even know how old she was. Um, she carried herself in a way that just was ageless. Uh, she was a policy person, a, a lobbyist both here in Washington, D.C. She had a national recognition uh, for being very, very far ahead of her time in terms of being a role model for women in the political field and in the legislative field. And uh, she always had a kind word. She was always very gracious and eloquent. And um, she's going to be sorely missed. I, and I look forward to just reciting the facts of her life uh, more extensively because it's uh, recognition that she deserves and uh, from which we can learn. Thank you very much, Ms. Perry. Yes, Ms. Hahn. Uh, thank you. Um, Ms. Teresa Lee Thomas, um, who was a longtime resident of Watts, passed away on January 29th. She was a homemaker who cared for all the young people in her community. And she survived by three daughters, Teresa, Maria, Lawanda, three brothers, four sisters, and the funeral services will be held today at Mount Olive Second Missionary Baptist Church. Thank you, Ms. Hahn. Okay, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Thank you all colleagues. This meeting of the Los Angeles City Council is hereby adjourned. City View Channel 35. Your city, your channel.